my Savior leads me, what if I do as beside? Can I doubt His tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divine is comfort, here by faith in Him to dwell. For I know whatever befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. For I know whatever befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. All the way my Savior leads me, cheers each winding path I tread, gives me grace for every trial, feeds me with the living bread. Though my weary steps may trip, and my soul a thirst may be gushing from the rock before me blow a spring of joy i see gushing from the rock before me blow a spring of joy i see all the way my savior leads me oh the fullness of his love Perfect rest to me is promised in my Father's house above. When my spirit clothed immortal wings its flight to realms of day, this my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. This my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever Summer and winter, springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, join in all nature in manifold witness. Great is my faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great Thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own clear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings on mine with ten thousand aside. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord.
He leadeth me, O oh, blessed God, O oh, word with heavenly comfort broad. Whatever I do, wherever I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He And he leadeth me. Sometimes mid scenes of deepest gloom, sometimes where Eden's bowers bloom, by water still or troubled sea, still tis his hand that leadeth me. He Be not dis every time God will take care of you beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. God will take care.
the two. He came with grace and majesty. He is a This is the third installment in our series on faith. And uh, we'll do a little bit of a review on what we've already discussed. We talked about how faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We talked about how that if we can prove something, then it isn't faith. No faith is required for something that we can see or feel directly. We also talked about how we don't want to believe anything without evidence and how that the apostles are an outstanding source of evidence that Jesus is real. They talked with him, walked with him daily for a few years. And if anybody knew he was the real deal, they did. And they believed it so strongly that after he was gone, they continued the ministry that he started with them <clears throat> and it cost them their lives. All of them except the Apostle John gave their life for their, uh, their faith in Jesus. Faith is what saves us, not our, our works, but faith in Jesus. The thief on the cross we talked about was saved strictly by his faith, by his exp expression of faith in Jesus. We talked about how that faith without works is dead. How that our works are the evidence of our faith. And if you have the kind of faith that saves, it will change your life. Faith will change your life. Jesus will change your life. This week we'll continue talking about faith. We'll discuss how do we receive faith in the first place, how do we keep our faith alive and active? How do we maintain it? How do we grow our faith? And I'm seeing that this series on faith is going to be a very lengthy one because faith plays a huge role in every aspect of our Christian walk. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. This short verse packs a real punch. Faith comes from hearing. You can't have faith in something that you've never heard of. You can't believe a story that you've never heard. But what inspires our faith? Well, it's the word of God. So it is imperative that everyone hear the word of God because faith is what saves us and God's word is the source of that faith. And we don't want anybody not to be saved. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16 he said unto them, this was Jesus speaking. He said unto them, Go ye into all the world 
and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. It's a very harsh verse. If you've never accepted Jesus, if you don't have that saving faith. But if you have that saving faith, it's very comforting to know that you will be saved. This was Jesus' last commission. And he said to go spread the gospel. Spread the good news. The good news that Jesus saves. The good news. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We're all supposed to be spreading the word. The gospel. Who do you think someone is more likely to believe? And I've said this before and I'll say it again. Who do you think somebody is more likely to believe? The old loudmouth preacher telling them about Jesus? Or somebody they know? A friend? A relative? I would think that they would be more likely to believe their friend than they would the old loudmouth preacher. The preacher is supposed to say that. But when a friend starts talking about Jesus, somebody just like you, I think it's more likely that they'll believe. believe. It's just more personal. But you might say, Brother David, I'm not an eloquent speaker. I don't know a whole lot of scriptures. I just break out in a sweat whenever I start trying to talk to somebody about Jesus. When I start trying to talk to people. And I'd say, well, what if I ask you about your grandkids? Would you break out in a sweat if I ask you about your grandkids? Or could you sit there for hours showing me pictures and telling me about your grandkids? Or maybe your hobby that you work on or the job you used to do. You could spend hours. I would bore you to tears, but if you if you were interested in, I, I was a machinist for many years. If you were interested in that, I could spend hours telling you about things that I did and how I did it. So why can't we tell people about Jesus? What's so hard about telling someone how wonderful Jesus is? You know, all we're required to do is just to tell them about Jesus. Tell them about our personal feelings about Jesus. What do you think about Jesus? Why do you think that you're so? Why do you believe that you're saved? Why do you believe that you're going to heaven? The Holy Spirit is the one that does the convincing. We don't have to worry about that. We just tell people what we believe. Then we've planted a seed. Tell people why we go to church. Tell people what we believe about heaven. Tell people how Jesus made a way to be forgiven of our sins. Tell people how it's faith and not works that save us. Tell them that Christians aren't perfect and have nothing to boast about. We don't think we're better than you. We just know the Savior. We're just so just just a, a beggar that's showing another beggar where the where the bread line is. It's just that our faith will save us. It's not that we're perfect. We don't ever do anything wrong. It's just that our faith will save us. Our faith in Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Romans chapter 10, verse 12 says, For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on Him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can someone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, the last song I sang this morning, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. This verse sounds very much like it is encouraging us to send out missionaries. And it is. But it also reiterates the fact that nobody can call on the name of the Lord until they believe in Him. And they can't believe in Jesus until they've heard about Jesus. Jesus. 
Then it says, how can they hear without a preacher? Or, and how can a preacher go unless he is sent? We've already discussed that you don't have to be a preacher to spread the word. You don't have to be a preacher to tell people about Jesus. And anytime you tell people about Jesus, you are giving them what they need to start developing faith. The faith that will save them. Faith comes as the Holy Spirit convicts. Many churches have a sign as you exit the parking lot. And it says, you are now entering the mission field. So, whenever we leave the church and we go back out into the world, we're supposed to be telling people about Jesus. We're supposed to be sharing our faith. If you have faith, you should want to share it. Amen? We are called, all called, to be missionaries. We are ambassadors for Jesus. What is an ambassador? It's somebody who represents. We might have a, a, a what we do, we have an ambassador. The United States has an ambassador to Mexico and all various countries. And their job is to represent the United States. Our job is to represent Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 says, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Paul was talking about himself and the other ministers with him, but this would also apply to any Christian. Kind of makes it important how we act, doesn't it? I saw, uh, uh, heard a, a quote years ago. It says, uh, Preach the word wherever you go and sometimes use words. You see, that's because our actions speak louder than our words. What are your actions? What message are they sending to the people that see you? We're ambassadors for Jesus. We need to act like Jesus would want us to act. And what is the message that we are to be sending? The message is that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone who has faith in the Lord will be saved. What did the thief on the cross do to be saved? He called on the name of the Lord. When we call on the name of the Lord, we profess our faith in Jesus. So, how do we keep our faith charged up? How do we keep our faith strong? Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Hearing the word of Christ builds up our faith. The same way we built up our faith in the beginning is the same way we keep our faith built up. How do we hear the word of God? <clears throat> well, you can't go hear Billy Graham anymore because he's passed on. So we got to find another way. We couldn't go, 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 to go hear Billy Graham often enough anyway. No, we can recharge our faith every day. It's not rocket science. First thing we need to do is read our Bible. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Meditate on God's word. You don't just read it. Meditate on it. Think about it. Keep it on your mind. Put it in your heart. This makes it all the more important to read God's word while we still can. While we still have the ability to read. At some point, our eyes will dim and we won't be able to read anymore. But if we've read previously, then we write these words in our heart and we can read God's word out of our own heart. Isn't that awesome? It dwells in us richly. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom 
singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thanksgiving in your heart to God. How many of us have the old hymns from 50 or more years ago memorized? I've told y'all previously how I would remember a song and I'd go to look at it in the hymnal we used when I was a teenager and it's not in there. I still remember all the words, but it's from a, a song book we, we got rid of when I was 10 or 12 years old. And I'll go, wow, that's, that's God's word in the form of a hymn. And I remembered it's written in my heart. We need to keep God's word alive in our souls. How else can you withstand the attacks of Satan? The verse we just read in Joshua also says that if we follow God's word, do what he says, it will make our way prosperous and successful. We need to keep our Christian batteries charged up. We need a daily dose of Jesus. How else can we charge our batteries? Well, I'm preaching to the choir because y'all are all here. But we can do it by attending Bible studies and worship services. Somebody said, well, do you have to go to church to, to go to heaven? I'd answer, well, technically no, but uh, you, you also don't have to have a parachute to jump out of an airplane. It's not going to end well, but you can jump out of an airplane without a parachute. It's hard to keep your batteries charged up without being regular in a church service, in a worship service. And it's really hard to be encouraging to others if you aren't having fellowship with others. And that's something we're supposed to be doing. This is a whole other sermon. Encouraging one another. Psalms chapter 119 verse 30 says, I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I have set my heart on your laws. The psalmist writer, those were his words. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I have set my heart on your laws. Today, I hope that all of you have, in fact, chosen the way of faithfulness. It certainly will make your life now better. And for sure, it will make your eternal life better. Because you see, Christianity isn't all about a bunch of do's and don'ts. It's about faith. And if you have faith and put feet to your faith, as James says, faith without works is dead. So we need to put feet to our faith. We need to have faith and then act on it. It will change your life for the better and it will change lives around you for the better. Amen? Well, let's sing one more song.